Henry, uh, obviously uh, the beginning, I shouldn't say the beginning, but quite an adventure coming up. Tell us about what you've got planned over the next couple of weeks. Well, the next couple of weeks we're going to be going down to Brazil to partake in the World Cup, you know, and hopefully the U.S. will do good. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we've always kind of been the underdog when we go, and we don't mind that too much anymore. We're kind of getting used to it now, you know. But I'm just glad to see that there's an interest pretty much this year. I'm I'm glad to see that because people are starting to pay, and they, I think they have like 700 and some places I saw on the Internet where they're going to be showing the World Cup this time. So that's awesome. Is this, have you gone every time that DeMarcus yes, has gone? Yes, yes. So what are the other places? Last, last, it was, uh, last year it was in South Africa. Before that, it was um, Germany. And before that, it was Korea. So you've gotten to go to all those places? I've gotten to go to all those places. Pretty much, have you traveled, following your two sons, you've gotten to travel the world, really? Got to travel a lot of places that I would not have gone if they weren't playing. That's the truth. How is that... Uh, how has that kind of bonded your family? Because I know that it's not all about soccer, but having that experience, you know, with your wife and with your two sons, that has to be, you know, invaluable regardless of, of the sport of soccer. Right, right. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a closeness, you know, because sometimes when they're, you know, not feeling their very best or they didn't play their very best, you know, we call them and we encourage them, or they call us and we talk to them and. You know, we keep them, you know, we let them know that, hey, you know, some days it's going to be like that. You know, it's, you go out there and play your best and still still lose, you know, and or you play your best and, you know, you get taken out of a game or whatever, and you just have to roll with that. So, but it, it brought us, I think it brought us closer together, just being there whenever they needed us, letting them know that even though you're a professional and you're away, mom's dad's, mom and dad is always there. Always ready. Just give us a call. Well, when did you realize that Demarcus was a special talent, and I mean special talent in the fact that he could be one of, when it's all said and done, one of the most elite soccer players in U.S. history? Well, it's it's hard to say because both of them had like a, a just a gift for playing at a young age. They both had that gift, and I just figured, you know, that eventually, because they both played basketball, if you watch Southside Sun, they both played basketball, and they both were good at basketball. So I'm thinking, you know, like most parents, they're going to go to college and play basketball and this kind of stuff, but they stayed with soccer, you know. They kept, they said, well, Dad, this summer, I would think they would want to go to a basketball camp. They want to go to a soccer camp. So I said, Okay. And then about 12 or 13, when, when I think the Marcus and them was in the regionals and I think Jamar and them were 15 and I think they won state. So that's when I kind of grasped that, you know, these guys, these guys might be, I better make sure that I get them where they need to be, you know, and kind of, kind of around that time, somewhere between 12 and 15, I, you know, I kind of started looking at it like, we better start looking at colleges and, you know, stuff like that. Because that's where I was headed. I was I was headed for them to, you know, go to a decent college and get an education and that kind of stuff. And, you know, n not knowing that both of them was going to make the national team at a young age. You know, I was like, wow. You know, and then that happened. The guy called. I don't know. I think it was after we played in Dayton. I think we played the Warrior Classic down in Dayton, and Jamar and them team won, and the Marcus and them team won. And I did have a guy come up to me and ask me, um, you know, he said, when are your sons going overseas? And I was like, and, you know, that was like news to me. I was like, overseas? I ain't paying no attention to that, you know. But I think the guy was from England or someplace, and he was coaching one of the teams in the Warrior Classic, and that's what he kind of asked me, you know. And after that, it just the thought kind of got in my head a little bit, and I was like, "Boy, these guys must really be good if there's an overseas guy saying something about them, you know?" Because 
at the time we were watching a lot of soccer because they were interested in soccer and we knew that over there it was like you know their bread and butter i mean most of those countries this that's what they do like we have basketball courts they have soccer fields you know say yeah it's it was awesome man awesome but around, around 13 to 15 somewhere in that area my wife and i were kind of like now we really got to make sure that they get to wherever they need to be. With DeMarcus, Jamar kind of gets to do everything first because he's the right, first. Right, right, right. Um, but in terms of historical perspective, DeMarcus is the one that's that's had the 100 caps and now the four World right, Cups. Right. Uh, is that something you ever envisioned? No. That's the, that's, the, that's the whole thing. We didn't, en we didn't envision at the time. We didn't envision even, you know, national team. We just thought they'd pick it up, they'd play it, go to college and play it, and that'd be the end of that. You know, I mean, good career, good college, you know, and that kind of stuff. And then after that, if something happened, you know, we were all for that. But they were just, I mean, they were just above, you know, above everybody else. I mean, they just always played above everybody else. And other people could see that, you know, coaches from other places and uh, higher up and the U.S. national team. But I always told them when they were playing, I said, you never know who's watching you. So always play your best. Oh, whenever you step out on that field, you leave it all out on the field. You know, don't hold your head down because something happened or whatever, or you get, you know, dip, start dropping your head because you get pulled out or put back in or whatever. You know, just play your hardest every single time. And to this day, they still do it. It's hard to take a job from them once they get it. Real hard. With uh, DeMarcus, 100th cap last year in Cleveland. Right. You were there, seen the video of you on the right, field, right. giving a hug. What was that moment like? And then what do you anticipate the moment like being on Monday when he's in that game against Ghana and becomes the first U.S. player to play on the field before World Cups? I was emotional I couldn't I mean it was like I mean it was like just a I mean just something within like you know you just never thought you'd get to that and and when they're playing you know you're not just like them you know I don't think there were other people who were keeping up with it you know the, with the stats and stuff but I don't think that he was really you know, I mean he knew but he wasn't like keeping up with the stats but yeah, I was I was very emotional. Me and I mean his mom, we just kind of, you know, went by ourselves a little bit and kind of hugged each other and cried a little bit, you know, because that just doesn't happen all the time, you know. And to be that experience and for us to be there and and do that with him, that was awesome, real awesome. Thirteenth player to get 100 caps in U.S. history at the time. He'll be the first to actually play in four World Cups. What do you what does that mean to you? What does you think what do you think that means to DeMarcus? What happened? Oh, I, th I I just I just think, you know, he's never been a statistician throughout his career, never been a statistician, but I think it'll mean something to him. I mean, to be in the same breath with Pele and Maradona cuz if I if you check, I believe they're the only two that have ever played in four World Cups with the Marcus. So he's going to be amongst some big names, you know. So, But I, I think, yeah, I, I think it'll mean something. I think it'll really, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll look back on it afterwards. Like he won't do it like now, but he'll look back afterwards and say, wow, you know, I really accomplished something. Where have you seen the biggest strides since the 18-year-old that played in the World Cup to the 32-year-old that's going to play in the World Cup this coming week? I would say in his, in his maturity, in each country that he played in, I mean, he just, he just showed a maturity that, you know, that most kids just wouldn't do. I mean, he didn't get there and, you know, was wild and all this kind of stuff. He got there, went about his business, handled his business, did what he needed to do, play as well as he could play. I mean, 
you know, you can just look at all the, you know, accolades he's got, you know. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. But that's what I think. I mean, he, his maturity from, from 18 through like 20, then 22, then 24. I mean, each time it was like a progression. And you, like, like I say sometimes, every time I thought I saw everything that he could be, he does something else, you know, and, and it's like, wow. Didn't know he, you know, didn't know he could do that. And then again, some other stuff would happen. And then he'd come out and he'd handle the situation, an interview or whatever. And, you know, he'd get hurt, like he got hurt a couple of times. And, you know, I thought that was going to be a downer for him, you know. But we called him and talked to him. And, you know, he got his strength back and, you know, got back on the field, started playing again. So, I mean, it's it's just been a progression to me of maturity. How proud are you of the fact that he has really reinvented himself in the game of soccer? Because you're talking about uh, around the age 27, 28 when he's in Glasgow playing for the Rangers, mm -hmm. dealing with a lot of injury issues, right, playing right. time was an issue, yeah. and you think, gosh, maybe this is the end of it. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes to Puebla. Uh, and he has flipped the script on his career right. when you thought it might be over, become a left back and right. really right. become a, a vocal leader of that defense. Right. How, how proud are you that he's been able to handle that adversity and essentially get a second career in soccer? Well, I, it's strange that you say that because he has always been of the mind that wherever he needs to play for the team, that's where he'll play. And I can remember a situation when he was younger and one of the coaches asked him, you know, how do you, do you, do you play better when you come off the bench or when you start? And he was younger, you know, and he said, when I start. And the coach, you know, politely sit him on the bench. <laughs> and he didn't get to start that game. After that, you know, he had the sense to know that, you know, I'll play, you know, the same doesn't matter if I start or if I come off the bench. You know, I'm going to play with the same intensity, with the same vigor. You know, I'm going to do the best I can. And that's what he learned. 